On my last winter road trip, I lost a big chunk of range compared to summer. Now, a lot of it was unavoidable, but let's be honest, some of it you could avoid. So today I want to go through a few tips to help you get more range in winter. So whether you're new to EVs or you've been driving them for years, these tips in this video should help you get more and a bit more predictable range in the winter months. Christmas is just around the corner. Welcome to Ben Goes Electric. So before we start, let's set some expectations first. So you can't beat physics. Cold batteries, they're less efficient. We can't get away from that. Heating the car, it uses energy more than cooling the car in the summer months. And short trips in the winter are basically the worst case scenario for electric cars. So the goal here, it's not to get summer range here in December around Christmas time. It's actually to reduce that hit and that horrible surprise that you may get for your first time of driving an electric car like this in the winter. So we're gonna try and increase the range more than you would get without using any of these tips. Now, tip number one, precondition your car properly. Now this is one of the biggest ones. If your car supports it, preconditioning is the best thing you can do to increase the range in the winter months. So what is preconditioning? Well, it's basically using energy, whether that is from the car's battery itself or the grid when your car is plugged in to heat up the elements of the car, so your batteries and your motors, because like I've stated, the cold soaked battery is less efficient, less energy dense. So by using a bit of energy, you can heat up the battery without driving and your car will effectively have its full top range that it can give. So ideally, especially before a longer trip, when your car is charging anyway, precondition your car on the app. You can usually schedule it so for when you leave in the morning, the battery is warm and also the cabin is warm as well. So the perfect condition for you to get in your car and start your journey. And of course, it is the best way to do it when the car is still plugged in from the grid. So you're not using any of that battery power you're not losing any range it's all been taken from the grid and yes it's going to cost a little bit more because you're sticking more energy in but compared to not preconditioning your car on a longer trip it ends up being cheaper the better range that you will get you also have better brake regen we'll get back to regen in a little bit and you'll also be able to charge faster later on if you have to rapid charge your car further on a trip tip number two speed matters more in winter than it does in summer now everybody knows that speed affects range the slower you're going to drive the more range you're going to get it's simple but in winter this matters even more cold air it's denser and it's going to increase that aerodynamic drag on the car especially at your higher motorway speeds in the uk at 70 miles per hour but importantly no you don't need to crawl along at 50 miles per hour on the motorway we've all got to be somewhere we can't spend ages crawling along on the motorway but simply dropping that speed from 70 to 65 on the motorway can actually save you a surprising amount of battery power something we are going to test in a future video it can even save more than turning the heating off and that's quite a common thing that people say is turn your heating off which we'll get back to in a bit and dropping that speed down about five miles per hour isn't going to affect the journey time by much. Over a long distance, you're talking like five minutes, if that. So speed does matter more in winter. If you can, drop the speed down just a little bit to maximize your range. Tip number three, use your seat heaters, heated steering wheel, and not just the cabin air. At the end of the day, when you're in a car, what do you want? You want to heat yourself up or you're heating the car up? you want to feel warm. So focus on heating yourself up rather than the cabin space around you, especially using cars that have a lot of glass. There's gonna be a lot of heat loss anyway. It's one of the biggest drains of power in winter is heating the cabin. It takes a lot of energy because there's a lot of air in here that you want to get from minus like 10 degrees sometimes all the way up to a nice 20, 21, 22 degrees. It takes a lot of energy, whereas if you've got them, heated seats and heated steering wheel, you can feel that heat on your body straight away. You'll feel a lot warmer than the actual cabin being warmer. 
because they heat you directly at the end of the day. It's not the hot air. They're physically heating your body. So for me, I generally have the heater seats and wheel on and I have the cabin temperature a little bit lower than you expect. I stay comfortable and the car is using less energy overall. It's a win-win situation. Tip number four, tires and aero matters. Now this one isn't exciting, but it really does matter quite a lot. As the temperature drops down, your tire air pressure will too. And your lower pressure in your tires means more rolling resistance on the roads which means less range, it's as simple as that. Now, most modern cars have sensors and you'll get a bing on your car infotainment system or screen stating that your tire pressure is a bit low. Well, not all cars have that. So it's worth every so often checking your tire pressure just to make sure they're at that manufacturer's specification because even I've had that before. Now, to pump up your tires. Thankfully, I've been given this beauty from Cyplus. It's a fully battery powered and rechargeable air compressor used to pump up all the tires, whether that's from your bike to your car, to your truck, or even a tractor. You can pump up any tires from this. You've got a simple dial on the screen to set your pressure. And it's even got a flashlight built in. And it being battery operated means you don't have to plug it into the 12 volts. You simply can just use it wirelessly. And when it needs charging every so often, you can just plug it in. It's quite nice and quiet as well. I would 100% recommend picking one of these up and always having it in your boot because you never know when you'll need to pump up your tyres. For this exact model, link is in the description down below. Another thing is, if your car came with aero covers, just like my Model 3 does, and you've taken them off because people prefer the looks of the raw alloys, winter time is probably the best time to get them back on your car because at the end of the day, they do improve efficiency at higher speeds and you want as much range as you can in winter. So if you can, stick those air covers back on your car. Tip number five, use eco or chill modes. Now most EVs these days have a chill mode or an eco mode built into them that they now kind of smooth out the throttle inputs and limit the top amount of power that you can get. And it kind of reduces those unnecessary power spikes and that will increased range yes i know it's not as fun as the full power and brunt that the electric car gets but you've got to think what's important at the moment is it more range or is it the excitement you get that you can choose that yourself but if you want the most range then you need to get eco mode on which you can find basically in your car settings they can also help the car feel a bit more calmer and steady in these wintry conditions. When there's a lot of ice about, you don't want to be skidding into a bush now, do you? Tip number six, regen braking. Now, in winter months, especially with a cold battery, don't be alarmed if you see dashes on your regen dial or you'll see your car not regening. It's the same as your car being 100% battery. A car battery, when it's cold, can't accept a lot of power and that's the same there it's basically the battery telling you i can't accept all this brake regen power so to combat that like we spoke about before use preconditioning warm up that battery and over the time you're driving you will warm up the battery anyway and you'll see regen coming back but it's important to maximize your regen usage try and stay away from the brakes as much as you can Drive in more predictable manner. Don't be accelerating towards red lights and slamming the brakes on. Smoother accelerations out from the lights as well will definitely help. And basically use regen as much as you can. Some cars like this car, they're on by default. You can't actually change the regen. But a lot of other cars, you can. So make sure you've got regen on. One pedal driving is the way forwards if you have it. That gets you the most regen. Or if not, level three regen braking it's a bit of a learning curve but it's important to learn if you want the most range in ev make sure you use the regen braking tip now number seven charging with a warm battery now what do i mean about that so like i said before cold batteries can't accept as much energy as warmer ones which then if you are turning up at a charging station and your battery is pretty cold it's going to spend a lot of time and a lot of energy warming up your battery and that's just money gone down the drain in my opinion so to prevent that you want to arrive with your car fully preconditioned to your rapid charger 
Most cars will do that automatically through the navigation system and others, you've got to press a little button to precondition your car, but make sure that is done. It just means you'll be spent less time charging and more time driving, which everybody really wants with an electric car at the end of the day. Another thing is to change your charging habits in winter a little bit. Now in the summer, fewer shorter stops are usually better than fewer longer ones. But in the winter, that is completely different because you need time for that battery to warm up. And on those shorter distances, it's not going to warm up to its maximal potential. So you'll want fewer charging stops and it gives the car more time to precondition and get that battery up to temp, which means you'll be spent actually less time waiting around charging and more time driving. So in the winter, longer charging stops, but fewer of them is the way forwards. Tip number eight now, clear that snow and ice properly. Now the benefit of EVs are you can warm up the cabin and defrost the car when you're still inside which is perfect you're getting into a lovely warm car and i love that but not all the ice and snow will be gone from the car because of that because it's focusing on the glass of the cars not the body panels you've not got an engine under the bonnet so you're going to get ice on your bonnet and on the booth and on the roof for an example so spend some time clearing that properly because snow and ice on the car will increase the drag your car's not as aerodynamic through that cold air it's going to reduce the rain significantly so spend that time out there scraping away the snow and ice and you will get more range and finally tip number nine remove unnecessary drag links on to the last one anything on the car will that adds drag will affect the range even more in winter roof racks roof boxes your bike carriers if you're not using them get rid of them that cold air will be hitting them and increasing drag and then decreasing range. So only have them on if you really need them. And that kind of goes the same in the car as well. Any unnecessary heavy items that you don't really need from the boots, from the from the frunk, we'll keep it American, remove them. If you don't need them, remove them. It's just going to add drag and it's just going to decrease your range and means your car is just going to be a bit more expensive to run in the winter months. So let's have a little bit of a reality check here. Even if you do everything right, winter range is still going to be worse than summer. Again, it's simple physics. You can't get away from that. But these tips are going to make your range a bit more predictable and hopefully that drop a little bit less. And that's what really matters when you're planning journeys at the end of the day. I hope you've enjoyed this little quick video at some ways to increase your range in the winter. Have you got any tips that work for you? If you have, Put them down in the comments below now don't forget to subscribe to the channel for future videos we've still got some good ones coming up before the end of the year and of course like the video and comment anything you want down in the comments as well love to see what you guys put in the next video we're going to be looking at does the speed on the motorway really affect efficiency that much in winter we're going to be driving at different speeds down the same stretch of motorway just to see how much energy you do waste going a little bit faster. Again, I hope you enjoyed this video, guys, and I will see you on the next one. Bye-bye for now.